Okay, folks, so I guess the number of beeps seems to slow down. I think we have 36 people, which is kind of a good bit. Um, I hope you can see the slides uh, with the Lake Virtual Interim heading. No. Sorry, say again? No, I cannot. We cannot see the slides. You cannot. Okay, so uh, Militia, I guess <laughs> once you grab the... Uh, Okay, let me uh, change the URL to host. Okay, yeah, so you have the host role now. Okay, so let me just try and share again. Share slides, share. There we go. Okay, so folks can see the slides now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, uh, so welcome to our lake replacement meeting for Vancouver. Uh, you see the chairs are Malisha and myself. We're here. Um, you know the charter. You have the mailing list. The Jabber room is there. Um, we have 13 people in Jabber and about 30 odd on the WebEx. So please join if you can. Uh, we have an Etherpad. Michael Richardson is taking notes in Etherpad. Thanks, Michael. Sliding on, we have the note well applies. Uh, so I guess many of you will have seen this over the course of the last week if you took part in any of the virtual meetings. If not, please read it. Uh, and if you took part in the virtual meetings last week for the IETF, the people were using this queuing mechanism in the WebEx chat. Um, I don't know if we will need it or not. Uh, we'll start without using that, that people can just talk. If that becomes too confusing, we'll use then we'll swap over to using that plus Q minus Q thing. Agenda. So here's our agenda for today, Agenda Bash, which is just now. Uh, I sent a mail earlier today to the list. Uh, there's kind of three issues that I think might benefit from kind of a little bit slightly higher level discussion than just the details of the text. Uh, then we got through the agenda as posted previously, which is the details of the working group last call and comments that are outstanding. And that should take the bulk of this meeting and is the goal of the goal of the meeting is to progress that to the point where we can see the finishing line, hopefully. And if we get that done, then we, there's some presentation on kind of state of play of uh, two of the possible uh, aches that have been that people are working on, which is ad hoc and CTLS. And then any other business as arising. I think we have two hours scheduled. Personally, I hate two-hour meetings, but I hope we're a bit quicker than that. But we'll see how we go. Um, so this is the moment for agenda bashing. Anybody? Have any agenda bashing? Uh, you're on here. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. So uh, it would be great if we could reserve some time for next steps. Uh, so even even if the uh, the working gr group last call comments drag out, I think we should have some some time for next steps. Fair enough. We will do that. So Malaysia, if you can remember in case I forget. Okay, other than that, are we good with this agenda? I'm going to assume so. Uh, I would just like to add that while we have a Jabber scribe, if any substantial comments, uh, any substantial comments should be brought to the mic and not on Jabber. So please. Uh, Refrain from having extensive discussions in the Jabber. Or, or bring those to the mic. Uh, also, uh, if you could add your name to the Etherpad if you're attending, that would be helpful um, because there's currently four there and uh, 36 people in WebEx. So please go to the Etherpad and add your name as having attended. That's their, our equivalent of a blue sheet. Okay, so we're, that's this our, that's our agenda. The the three issues I sent a mail to earlier to the list. Uh, I'm going to assume that people have read that. Um, if you haven't, then you'd probably catch up as I go. So basically, the three issues I think that might that come up in multiple comments that were made on the on the the requirements text. The first is how this relates to Cozy Core in particular. The second one is whether we, you know, we sh I think we should, we might benefit if we recognize the reality that we have ad hoc and CTLS as candidates things, um, both of which are presumably likely to not go away. 
And the third point is it's kind of like how much precision is it useful to aim for with respect to lower layers in the communications environment. So I'd like to just take a couple of minutes to take each of those in order and see if we can uh, come to some agreement on, on where we stand with respect to those and then have that hopefully shorten the discussion of some of the detailed texts. I can start with, with the COSI OSCORE part. There is a slide four uh, in the uh, requirements. There is, but I, would, I would like to not go there just yet. Right. Um, so essentially, I think there's, there's a number of comments that were made. I made them in my own comments earlier as well, that the current text is very prescriptive about using COSI and OSCORE. As chair, I, I mean, it seems to me that will make it difficult for us to get rough consensus because it kind of says you can't do CTLS. So I would like to see if we can figure a, in general what's the right approach to handling. Yeah. So the, the current text is is recommending codes. It's not mandating codes. Is that still too strong still? Uh, again, as chair, I, I I would worry it is as chair, but I'd, I'd like to get comments from other people who make comments on this. Okay. So just just one more more thing before letting the floor. So OSCORE needs cozy algorithms be negotiated in ad hoc. So, so we can't go without mentioning COSI in, in, uh, in the requirements. And then there are other aspects, which we also go into that we would like to avoid duplicated implementation of crypto wrappers. And uh, there are other, I mean, the natural thing would be to use COSI, but that, that's beside the point. I think we can't go without uh, the ache delivering COSI algorithms to OSCOR. That, that's basically no go. So, so we need to mention Cozy at some point. Yeah, I, I think I raised this point. I think the point was, yes, you need to negotiate those algorithms for uh, for OSCOR uh, as an output of this, but they don't need to be the same, same as the algorithms that are used for the uh, negotiation. And that's what the latest text is saying, exactly that. Uh, Joran, you, ref you referred in your email to me to latest text. I've looked at GitHub, and I don't see like a lot of changes. So, am I missing something? Is there a branch I should be looking at? There is. Yeah, that it's the working group last call update branch. Okay, that will make perhaps that explains why you didn't see, uh, you know, a bunch of things I was expecting. Um, it says the AIC shall support negotiation of COSI algorithms to be used in COSI in OSCOR. The AIC shall support negotiation of algorithms to be used in, in the AIC. So it doesn't say that COSI you need to do COSI algorithms in the AIC. So, so I just posted into the Jabber the diff between the WGLC updates uh, branch and the last published one. Sure. I mean, well, I mean, this text says it is strongly recommended that COSI is reused by the AIC. That's like prescriptive for no obvious reason. So, so Eric, what would you suggest it say that that would that could get you know move us to that that sentence be struck entirely? I I, I think um, I think it's quite natural to use COSI, but I kind of agree that it might it's maybe not what you should have as a requirement. Maybe maybe state the requirement about code complexity and code size, and then write. Uh, this can, for example, be achieved by using COSI. Then that aligns with a lot of other requirements we have in the requirements document about security properties. Well, I, I can live with that. Okay, great. Um, actually, actually, Stephen, reading slide four would, would simplify for everyone in this situation because we have the text there, so everyone can form their opinion. Okay, so, so, so uh, but I, I, at a higher level, we, can, we will get to that. So the basic idea is that we don't want to be too prescriptive, but we do want to, to be able to mention Cozy and as as relevant. Is that is that something that everybody is happy enough with? I can live with that. So hearing no objection, I think that's that's our. We'll get to the text later, but that's our kind of goal. So the second point I wanted to, I thought might be useful to to touch on at a higher level than the text is the you know. It seems to me that the output here of, you know, from the IETF, if not necessarily from the Lake Working Group, is likely to be this set of requirements as a piece of text in an internet draft, and CTLS developed in the TLS Working Group, and likely, if this Working Group adopted ad hoc, then ad hoc produced by this Working Group. That seems like the likely outcome. 
However, we're, we're in the text, we're talking about the ache, as if there will only be ever one. And that seems to me, I think, to tee us up for a, a bit of, you know, uh, argument that we don't necessarily have to, if we just recognize the reality that it's kind of likely that ad hoc and CTLS will both get progressed to some levels at a different timeline in different working groups and both trying to meet these same requirements. And I think if we can recognize that and be happy enough with it, no, we're not saying it's the perfect out outcome, but we're happy enough with it, then that might help us uh, not get stuck. So how do people feel about that kind of concept and recognizing that that's the case? I think that's an excellent excellent way forward. That's exactly what we've what? wanted from Eric from the start. No, I don't understand. Both... I... Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So both, both to have an, an uh, a compact version of TLS and an ultra compact ache that's that fits with OSCOR. I mean, so not to put a final point on it, Stephen, but no. Um, like, part of the reason why we're putting effort in here is we do not think it's healthy for the ITF to standardize a big pile of different aches. And so, if the outcome you propose basically predecides that question. Uh, so I'm not posing it as an outcome. I'm suggesting I'm 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 saying it looks like that's the reality. That's what's going to happen. So I'm not saying that that's what should happen. I'm saying that um, it, I don't see how that how anything. I think that's likely to happen. Put it that. Way. Okay. Um, but I mean, Richard. Do you no, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I, I, I was I was a little surprised to hear she can say that, so I'm trying to process it. Well, I'm, I'm a little confused here because it seems like the chairs are the ones who would be in the position of calling consensus on exactly this question. Um, so pre-calling this seems kind of out of order. Pre so, so, I mean, Richard and, and Eric, I mean, we have... We have a bunch of people who've been working on this ad hoc thing for a couple of years now. I, I, I don't seem to be going away. I mean, what is your hope that they, that CTLS will just cause them to say, "Oh, we were so, wrong"? So like, but let's look at what the standards here are, Stephen. Like the standard for publishing a document is not that people are tenacious and they keep carrying around; it's that there is ITF consensus. Sure. And so, like, we we need to clear that bar. Yeah, so we're, we're, yeah, we're, we're, okay, but I mean, if, if, if the people who are, you know, if, if that's going to be a block, then we should, I think we should recognize that block because that's going to basically mean this is a pointless working group. If, if, you know, if we have a bunch of people who are saying, I'm arguing for ad hoc and I'm not going to argue for anything else, and we have a bunch of people who are saying, I'm arguing for CTLS and I'm not going to argue for anything else, that seems to me that that's just taking this whole working group for, for failure. Hey. If we can't resolve it, if we can resolve it, great. But if we can't resolve it, that's basically just taking us up for failure. John Matson here from Ericsson. I think from, as one of the authors for ad hoc, we are definitely not only arguing for ad hoc. As Ericsson, we think a compressed DLS would be very, very useful. And I think Ericsson would use that in a lot of cases. I think it, I don't think the compressed TLS will be small, optimally small for the most constrained IoT development. But, and I don't think it maybe should, I think it should still be TLS. So I don't know, I would, Ericsson would very much like to see both. We think both are needed. So John, I'm pleased to hear you say that. I think the operant question here is, you know, if we acknowledge that there's use cases for CTLS regardless, I think the operative question here is, and the reason we're doing this requirement document is, is there a need for another protocol in addition to CTLS? Or can can TLS be made compact enough to uh, to meet the requirements? Yeah, uh, I, what I've seen so far, I don't, so I think, it seems like it's possible to do um, AKA in three messages for 551 byte LoRaWAN and 5 hope 6 dish that has 
significant advantages from any protocol that would cause fragmentation. Um, I, I think CTLS, I don't think CTLS will or should reach that kind of small messages, then it would probably not be anymore. Well, so, I mean, it, it may well be that that's the case, but I think the reason that Ecker and I have been asking for the precision in this requirements document is to come to, 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 come to the, a, a decision um, that you seem to have already come to. I, I don't have this, you know, maybe it's because I haven't been in this space for a while, but I don't have the feel for the underlying technologies, but it's not clear to me that um, that's the case, given that even the early prototypes of CTLS have been getting in the same, uh, you know, within a, a small fraction of, of where ad hoc is. So this is why we need the precision and the requirements to to do this evaluation that, that you know, it's on this question where, where you seem to have an opinion already, and that's, that's fine. Um, but I think we need to get consensus around the answer to that question um, and, and build that consensus if we're going to make progress here. So if I could jump in, this is Ben Kaduk. Um, I think that, John, the question that Stephen is trying to ask you is is roughly, um, would there be a case where CTLS is small enough that you no longer see a need for ad hoc? Uh, and what Richard is trying to say is sort of, you are acting like you assume the answer is that CTLS will not be able to get that small. Um, and you know it's perfectly reasonable to to expect that or believe that. But I think Stephen is trying to ask is, uh, is it possible for you to change that opinion based on some data that we come up uh, with the future work? It was like, we want document we want a protocol quite soon we also want i think the current ad hoc messages are basically exactly they are just as small as they need to be to get the optimized performance and then i think there is message size i have not seen any code sizes for ctls but it seems it seems obvious that adding another encoding instead of cbor and another crypto document implementation instead of HOSI, which already is there in the OSCOR um, IoT device, would add code size and complexity. So I mean, oh, go ahead. I mean, uh, sorry, are, are you, were you on, John? Yeah. I mean, I, sorry, I should, I should only agree with John's basic principle that obviously like, like, you know, something bespoke will obviously always be able to get um, you know, obviously, they be able to be optimized further than something that's not bespoke. I think that's clearly true. Um, um, I think the the the, 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 the and the, going to what you were saying, I mean, the, the reason, but the reason we are pressing on the requirements is precisely that that, that we don't think the we, we didn't think the objective was to have it be as small as humanly possible, but be small enough to like not to, to to be within the performance cliffs that these environments, you know. Um, you know, uh, 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 present, and so we're trying to understand where the performance cliffs in the environments are, so we understand the performance curve against which we're trying to design for it. And and as speaking the only for myself, if it became clear to me that like you couldn't hit those performance curves without doing things that I'm not prepared to do, or that the Tails working group thought were stupid, then I would be like, okay, screw it, like go ahead, and <laughs> I, I'm done. <laughs> um, um, so. Um, but that's not yet clear to me, which is why I'm, which, hence my comments on, on the last call document. Yeah, I have a couple of comments here. Is the first comment is that um, although it may not have been clear in the document, but hopefully it is now, that there are strict limits specified. I mean, there are strict limits where how much each message, um, how large the messages can be. And I, I, I hope we can come to that uh, at the end of this meeting to understand that those limits are there and they've been there for for a long time, even if it hasn't been clear. Um, we have been discussing this for almost a year now. And Maybe you can summarize, uh, what, are, what are the size limits? Oh, I think John did already. So, so we'd like to have, uh, we are again stepping in ahead of the requirements slides, but we'd like to have a an, an AKA which fits into 51 byte LoRa at link layer, and the five hop six dish uh, 
uh, at, um, yeah, five of six sixties. Sure, but, but we but we know that it's not possible for any public key based protocol, any signature based protocol, and therefore, but it doesn't have to be signature based. Okay, um, that's correct, but 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 like the the requirements document itself says we have to have one that has signatures, and so. The, I mean, if, if, if what, if what you wish to design is a protocol, which only is based on pre-shared keys, then like that is a different design problem, but the, the requirements document says it has to have, um, has says signatures. And so like, I guess my point is like that, 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 that like, that. Like, yes, I, I understand like there's like a lower limit for the very smallest, most compact protocol with like the most compact type of crypto. And then the question is like, what are the, wh where, where are, what is the curve of cost for like every incremental byte and every incremental message? Um, and like, that's precisely the question I'm trying to get an answer to. And so I, and I, I feel like, and I, and I, don't, I, I think I understand this 51 point, but I don't think it's responsive, <laughs> that question. Because as I know, we, we know we're gonna have to go over that 51 limit in a number of cases, unless we're gonna say we're only designing a protocol as P-Shark based. So this is you. Um, when I was said static um, Helman, I was thinking of real public key. Oh, sure. Well, I, 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 I again, like, but the, the, the requirements document says we have to have a signature as protocol. True. So, so I mean, so there is there is one thing and that needs to be clear as well. So there are many many scenarios to support, uh, including certificate based scenarios. Are not necessarily, uh, which not necessarily would fit into these type of frame sizes. But for for the cases that people are looking at, for instance, in Lore Alliance, where they're trying to design a raw public key based replacement of the PSK based, that that, that is the important case to get the raw public keys within the frame size. Okay, I, I guess I, I, I'm gonna say I find this quite surprising, given that the original designs of ad hoc were signature based and therefore clearly could not fit into this limit. And the, and the selective helmet thing was only brought up quite recently. Um, I'm finding like I'm finding this like this argument a little puzzling. Okay, but that's I mean that's uh, the, since version one there has been mentioning of static Diffie Hellman and signature and mixed cases. And for the benchmarks, well, what what you need to address those with the raw public key. It doesn't say it has to be signature based. So that's, I mean, basically what, what we see here is that the requirements are clear on this point. What is the optimal number of messages per packet of stream? And we, we have an existence proof for, for a protocol which actually complies with that. And then if there are multiple candidates, well, we have had plenty of time to develop these protocols. We've been discussing this for many years now. For how long time more should we wait for, for, for an, a candidate, another candidate to appear? Well, in all fairness, you have been sort of uh, changing your proposal uh, over those years. Actually, those requirements has not come from us. Those requirements has come from other people. When you say you have, then you are talking to the entire working group. You mean as document author? As document authors, yeah. I mean, of course, we have written down the requirements from the from the working group. Yes. I mean, uh, Thomas is talking about ad hoc, the document, the protocol. Yeah. yeah, ad hoc is a solution. We are talking about requirements now, I suppose. Requirement, requirement. Then, no, no. Ad hoc is the only only solution that's going to be considered by this working group. Then the requirements are kind of secondary. I have a proposal uh, that that we move to the requirements slides where some of these things are actually. Um, so you don't have to ask the questions before. Would that be a way forward on this? Well, look, the, I'm not. I'm not sure you before on because I, I I see that we still haven't resolved the basic underlying disagreement here, which is I think that the people who are arguing for CTLS are are essentially saying we don't want to do anything that's not CTLS if CTLS is good enough, and. They're not, you, you know, you're, you're trying to make a case to say that there is a situation where CTLS can't meet the requirement. Um, but I don't think we've kind of, if we could reach agreement on, on that, that that is the case and that therefore there may be a need for a non CTLS uh, based ache, then I think that would give us a way forward. But if we don't have that agreement, 
then I think we're just going to talk about some requirements text and then get back to exactly this disagreement. Well, I guess, I guess but I, 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 I think it's probably true, perhaps true, but I guess, like, the, the, the discussion we're having right now is precisely the one I'm asking for, which is that, um, which is that uh, we have n application scenarios, and um, and we uh, um, and we have some um, or sorry, n crypto scenarios, and then we have some set of um, you know uh, packet sizes uh, um, that that, that uh, uh, some curve of like of cost against 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 message sizes, and that we and, and that what we ought to be saying is. For each of these scenarios, this is the target we are attempting to hit for for those scenarios. And so far, we have, as far as I can tell, so 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 my understanding is we have basically, um, you know, uh, we we have, uh, you know, about eight different crypto scenarios ranging from PSK to signature based, um, uh, uh, to full signature based on both sides with certificates. And that what I'm trying to understand precisely is what the what, what the what the what the message size and message number target is for each of those. And so, yeah. like what I hear is John asserting, sorry, is John asserting that the message target for, for two of those, namely PSKs and Status Fee Hellman, is three is three messages each 51 bytes, no more than 51 bytes each. What are the rest of them? I think Static Fee Hellman might not be a target. It's maybe PSK and RPK that is. The thing I think the the users of uh, AKA doesn't really matter if they use a signature or a static if they have them. They care about the performance and and security properties. And so sorry to jump in, but it sounds like you know, Ecker is mentioning we've got this list of call it eight different potential you know crypto matching ups and you know, uh, John, you're saying that maybe you know some of them may not be relevant to the application and that's fine. Uh, but I think Ecker's point is that of these uh, eight, and I'm again not 100% certain about the eight number. Yeah, whatever. Eight I'm not, scenarios, I put eight out of, out of my head. There's like two or three of them that we feel like we have these concrete uh, limitations in place of that we, we think we can target the three frames uh, and 51 bytes per frame. But then there's another five scenarios uh, in terms of how the, the crypto algorithm primitives might match up uh, that we don't have the same level of clar clarity about what we're actually targeting. Um, and I, I would note that even if we were just going to do an ad hoc working group, we would need those scenarios to know if ad hoc was done. Um, you know, there's as, as Hannes pointed out, there's been a lot of change in ad hoc over over its the, the time the span of time it's been around. Um, as people have talked about additional scenarios and additional mechanisms. Um, so even just having a definition of done for whatever the protocol is, we'll need to know that set of scenarios that I can mention. Right. And I, I guess, I, yeah, and I think that also goes to what the, what the crypto is required. I mean, so this document I'm looking at right now says like, um, you know, in section 2.2, it says, Mutual public key authentication credentials may be need to be supported for RPK and certificate-based authentication. In the case of Diffie Hellman key exchange, both the use of signature-based public keys and static DH public keys is expected. So I mean, like, if that's not right, this needs to be fixed. And if the scenario, and, and, the, and be clear, if the scenarios are that we no longer care about certificates, all we care about is like raw public keys, um, is is like two is exactly two scenarios, namely PSK and raw public key. Sorry, P PSK and then raw public keys. They're static to the only public keys. Then like, world is a lot simpler. And like, we should write that down. <laughs> and then like, and, and and then look at where we are then. So I guess Ecker. Sorry to jump in again uh, once more, but I could, for this list of scenarios, do you think that uh, what's currently in the requirements document is intending to be that list or is close to that list? I thought it was, but now, but but now I'm thinking I'm hearing maybe it's not. I would um, I would not say that certificate is out of scope. There's interest in that, but I would say that if we prioritize something, it should be PSK plus elliptical Diffie Hellman and RPK plus elliptic curve defamation because these are the two things that are this is what a very constrained IoT device the deployment is likely to to use because it's what they can use and it's also the space where it lacks where the world lacks a really compact efficient AK. If you have certificate then then the size of the AKA overhead 
starts to make uh, less and less meaning the larger your certificates are. Sure. I, I, so I guess, I guess I'm actually trying to like, um, I, I mean, I mean, so, so I, I don't know how, I don't know how we got, like, I, I so, 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 I mean, I, you know, this is like we got here by like sort of a securitist route, but, um, um, but I guess I'm wondering if perhaps the, the, the answer is to like radically descope this work, honestly. Um, I mean, if the, so, so, so Yarn, you sort of said something earlier, which, which I didn't follow up on, but I thought was interesting, which is effectively that we have these, we have these situations where people are doing, um, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, raw, um, raw PSKs now, right? Um, and uh, are they doing raw public keys now? Yes. How are they? What, what are they using for the ache? For the ache, yes. Or no, sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. The, 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 the application scenarios this is intended to displace are ones in which people are using just like nothing or like just shared keys, right? You mean currently, or or what? What? The, yeah. What? What are? What are the? What are the application environments in which this new technology is intended to be introduced? Um, so what I, I mean, what I know of, but this is, uh, yeah, I'm, the little I know of it because Ericsson is not a member of, of Lora Alliance, but um, it, it's a rumor that there is going on work on uh, on uh, replacing the PSK is currently used for LoRa with a raw public key um, based authenticated um, key exchange to provision the raw the, the PSKs to be used. So that that's that's one of the and they they're really looking for something constrained. This is this is uh, exactly the type of setting that we are having having this. And there are other settings as well where people are are would like to move from a PSK based PSK based provisioning scheme to a, a public key based provisioning. Right. So go, do we need, do we need to like go through this list of eight things and say like what are people doing for this now and what do people want to do with this in the future? Ben, I don't. I'm not sure we we do. I mean, it sounds to me like the. Is it, what's required here is an existence proof of a, of a realistic scenario that CTLS cannot meet. Uh, for the question that you have been attempting to get us to stay on topic for, yes, I agree that's the case. Uh, and if we're going to try to answer that question, then we probably only do need to care about these one or two most uh, minimal of the eight scenarios. Yeah, and I think, and I, I, I believe now, I'm, I'm not sure about this entirely, but I believe that the feeling of the people proposing ad hoc is that they've already done this. That's what they've kind of been saying to me. Um, and clearly, that's they, if they have already done it, it hasn't kind of landed because that's it's not perceived that way. Sure. I, I, so it's like, well, and part, part of the reason done it, you know, the, 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 there's not agreement that they've done it is that there hasn't been agreement on what it is. Uh, I thought that was part of the point of this document is to establish what the target was. Um, so that one could evaluate whether or not, in fact, ad hoc um, was meeting um, all the things that they, they that people apparently assume that they do meet. So, so Richard, I think that's kind of right. But I mean, wh whether the idea of a requirements document was ever a good idea is a different thing. I think what we're getting down to now is that is if there is an existence proof that there is a scenario that's realistic that cannot be met by CTLS, then that might give this working group a way forward. Do we all agree with that? If the existence proof is there, sure. But I'm not. I guess. I guess I'm trying to avoid creating a situation like an unbounded amount of work for people, um, which I think you alluded to in your email, Stephen. Um, I mean, I guess. I guess. Like, like I'm just finding. I, I guess I'm trying to. I'm finding myself a little confused. I'm trying to figure out how to move forward because um, when this work was first introduced, um, you know, there was a lot of, um, you know, th there was there was a there was a lot of sort of. Uh, you know, measurement of scenarios, which looked to me like they were isomorphic to TLS scenarios, but were designed to be much more compact. So, you know, it would be like, well, it's still Sigma and there's still signatures, but 
there's, you know, um, but, but like, we're going to like have the certificates out of band and we're going to like compactify the messages or, um, you know, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And if the, if the notion instead is that, um, and yes, there was like report of RPK, but there's like a pile of things, right? So there's a whole like, like list of like, of like, of like stuff, which is the very, the very kind of thing like TLS aspires to do, which is have like a framework for like doing a whole bunch of things, right? And if the truth of the matter is that all that really matters is, um, is like what public keys and um, in exactly two, is it, sorry, exactly two modes, which is shared, shared PSKs and defending a development and raw public keys with status, with static, with static, static development. Um, and like none of those other stuff is in scope, then like it does start to seem like it might be appropriate to design a new, a new, a new, a new thing that was designed in, like not to have any sensibility and only do those two things and nothing else, given that like, you know, uh, you know, given given that like those are not like things that I think are in the core area where TLS is trying to work. Um, and so, like, I'm trying to sort out like like, but on the other hand, this document like is this document like has like a specification effectively like a protocol which is like has has a requirement set which is a protocol which is like essentially extensible to TLS and like covers many of the same application scenarios. And so, I'm trying to understand whether those are real requirements or the others are not. Um, and in particular, like it like says certificates and it says like signatures. And so, like, are those things real or are they not? So there are requirements for 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 the setting where you use mixed credentials as well. Mixed credentials being raw public key on one side and PSK on the other, or certificates on one side, or what, what do you mean by mixed? Mixed public keys. So you would have uh, raw public keys on one side and certificates on the other. Not transmitted. But that doesn't meet then the 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 size limits. And it, the pro my problem is always like, and I've seen this numerous times is at the beginning, everything is portrayed as lightweight. And then you have all these, uh, even at already at the fairly early stage, you have this laundry list of features and then you only add more um, in, 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 in a split second. And then, but, then it won't, won't, be, won't be this small anymore. Adding, adding more features doesn't make it less efficient for the case when you use static static. But sure does you know, negotiate to get one of those features. Right. While a TLS implementation typically in, implement basically everything, TLS 1.2, 1.3, a lot of cipher suits, hundreds of cipher suits, a lot of extensions. That's not the case for very, very, very constrained IoT devices. You expect them to, they will implement PSK authentication and then they will use that. They will probably not support anything else than exactly what they have nailed that's, that's true for web browser based implementation uh if you if you look at an embedded implementation it's of course different uh because you can sort of uh, compile out some some of the code that you don't want um but, but with all the the flexibility there's some cost associated with it and and i don't see how you meet those uh requirements then in in the sort of cases that you have outlined I think, I think there's a difference between complexity and this in the specification and complexity in what you can choose to Im actually implement. Implement, you can choose to implement just a small subset. Right. Can I interrupt this chair, if that's okay? Um, I, I'd like to get back to, if there is an existence proof that we need something that is not CTLS, then I think we have a way forward. If there is no existence proof that's accepted, and we don't have, if we don't have consensus that existence that existence proof is there, then I really don't see much of a way forward because well, we'll just keep repeating this discussion. Well, I, I was trying to propose one, Stephen. Um, oh, Richard, were you talking? I was going to ask, what existence proof do you mean, Stephen? Just so, so I understand. So, uh, so, so I think you and, and Eric were asking for, you know, show me the scenario where CTLS cannot do what's needed. If that, if a realistic scenario exists where that's true, then it seems there is a need for another protocol and ad hoc is proposed. And then after that, we can discuss whether it should be extensible or, or how much cruft it should get. But I, I, unless we get to the point where we know if, if CTLS and something else or CTLS is, is all that's going to be done, 
I think this we're just going to keep repeating this discussion as has happened for a year or more. Sure. So, so that, that's why I'm trying to propose a different a different way of thinking about this because I think that, that um which is that um so I certainly hear what you're saying um uh um uh but but I I guess like what I'm what the, the, the reason, as I, as I sort of said, the reason that I, that I primarily understood this initially was I think it's unhealthy for the IETF to standardize a large number of like big um, ache, ache protocols that have to be maintained. Fine, large for us. Um, or ten. We already have too. We already have too many, frankly. Um, like so, so more than more than more than one. Well, more than two or three, which we already have more of, right? I mean, just look we at have, we have we have Ike, HIP, and TLS and SSH. Okay, SSH. I mean, I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. When we yep. wanted to add, it was a it was a multi year effort merely to add new cryptogra new new elliptic curves to uh, um to, to 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 protocols, right? Um, we had a whole work which I was add elliptic curves to protocols. It's bananas. Um, and so like the um so, so that, that, that's my philosophy. I mean, everybody else's philosophy, but um the um but. Uh, that said, if we have a, um, and I think, but I think why that gets expensive is when you have a bunch of general purpose protocols. And so if there's, if there's an understanding that like, actually this is designed for like a really special set of use cases, that is not like a generic system that just happens to be slimmer, then I think it like makes sense to try to carve that off and be like, Hey, we're just going to do that. But when I read this document, this document is, is, is a requirements document for like a generic set of use cases. That's what gives me heartburn. And so if like, and so I think, I think, I, I don't know if, if Ka or Kaba wanted to be on the, um, um, what, what, wanted his thing related to microphone, but, um, you know, uh, my suggestion was attempt to let them narrow the scope here. <laughs> um, and, um, and if the scope were like much narrower, then it'd be like much easier to see how like it made sense to have like a custom protocol that like only did that one or two things. So again, speaking personally, Eckhart, I mean, I actually have some sympathy for that argument, but I, I don't think we could claim that it has ITF consensus that they're, you know, that. I didn't say it did. No, no, but... I'm, just, I'm just pointing out. So, um, so, I mean, you know, while it does make a lot of sense to not duplicate, uh, sometimes it does. <laughs> Sure. Um, so, uh, I, can, can I can I clarify? It's my understanding that the the, the ad hoc proponents believe that they have provided that uh, existence proof. Is that what you, what you guys believe? Pretty much, yeah. Okay, and and Eric and and Richard particularly, and and others who want to chime in, of course, obviously. Um, you, you you guys don't think that you've seen that. I think it's very hard to say that we have proven that CTLS cannot do this. I don't know. As Karsten writes on the list, uh, CTLS can be basically anything, I guess. You will, okay, but that's the same criticism that people are making about ad hoc, so that it has changed. So I think, uh, you know, so I, my understanding is the ad hoc proponents believe that they have offered an existence proof that there's things that you can't compress TLS to do. And my understanding is that the, TL, the CTLS proponents do not believe that they have seen that existence proof. Am I correct about both proponents' positions as of today? So, so Eric and Richard, you, you don't think you've seen this existence proof that there's a thing you can't compress TLS down to, or do you think that there is such a thing? I mean, for such a thing to exist, we would need to have a, a clear statement of what the thing is, um, which is exactly what Eric and I were asking for in our last call comments. Well, actually, you were asking for a little bit more. I think you were asking for you know a, a range of a panoply of options or, or you know all the full kind of description of the environment. But if it's an existence proof, I think that's a bit more tractable. Well, I mean, I mean, this, this goes back to Richard's point. I think about what it, that that choosing between two things versus knowing when you're done. Um, you know, um, I mean, uh, uh, so. Um, yes, I mean, it would certainly be the case, like, certainly, certainly, be, certainly be the case that if, like, there was a demonstration that there's something that, like, one couldn't do um, by, by slimming down TLS without doing appalling things that we weren't going to do, then, then yeah, then, like, we said, then we actually have to say, like, that this is not a viable path. But I wouldn't tell you if you're done, if, like, you have eight different application scenarios or five or whatever the number is, and, like, you have no idea what meeting those application scenarios means. Right. Can I jump in? Um, so I think, Ecker, if I can sort of try and paraphrase what you were saying, uh, if the only use case that we cared about was exactly the symmetric pre-shared key case 
and we did not have an ad hoc that was also wanting to do raw public key and certificates and all this other stuff. And we were just focusing on symmetric shared PSK. Uh, then it kind of seems like we do have this existence proof that CTLS is not a good fit for that. Would you agree? Uh, let, let me let me try to let me try to nuance that a little bit. Um, uh, I think I think we'd have it. I, th I think that um, what I would say is that. Well, okay. I think your, the actual phrasing you you gave, I think, is probably right, which is to say, like, why would you pull in all this apparatus if all you wanted to do is that? Um, right. And so um, I guess that, my, that's my... But I, I just want to clarify that I don't. That, that's not a concession that CTLS does not have that does not have messages that are that compact, which is not true. Okay. And so then I was going to try and follow on to say, but you now once you start on adding other thing, other use cases into scope, and it requires a lot more flexibility. Um, and you know, options to be able to do or not do different types of things, then that gets you worried um, because it's no longer this very limited scope and it starts to look more general purpose. Uh, and once you have this flexibility in the apparatus that you need for a general purpose mechanism, then it's no longer this very narrow scope and it looks a lot more similar to uh, TLS. To the, yeah, so the use cases that a general purpose ache like TLS or ICA is designed for. Yes. Okay, so so what I, I what I think I was hearing from Ben's uh, fine summary there was there kind of is an existence proof there for a li very limited scenario. Um, kind of all, we, let me let me just say we, we kind of all know that if somebody writes a pro, de, defines a, a protocol for that very limited scenario, it will extend to do other things. We kind of know that. that that's a, kind of inevitable, I think, right? And that causes a, a worry. Now, uh, so, that, that summary? Uh, not really. No. Um, um, uh, I think. I mean, the, the 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 thing the thing that made the the, 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 the part of Ben's thing that I found compelling was the um was the specificity what i mean so the the the, the re, it doesn't mean if you have a very limited scenario and you're willing to commit yourself to be only operating a very limited scenario then taking a then under certain circumstances taking a general, generalized protocol and slimming it down to that may or may not make sense and what i was saying was if really all you wanted to do was psk and um you know and, and if you and then hoisting the, even the ctls apparatus in may, may very well not make sense but that's not that that's not the, when you, but the, but the the reason that the reason I say that's not a that's not a that's not a proof in the sense you were talking about is that when you stack on the other application scenarios, um, you know, uh, um, uh, listed in this requirements document, the um, the, the the limitation which motivated that conclusion no longer holds. Three or four years ago, I think we made that exact determination. Um, we looked at TLS and said, I don't think we can compress this at, at, at all uh, the way that we would like. Um, and and so we created ad hoc. And and then we got this uh, multiple year long, uh, well, uh, we can make TLS work for you. Well, many of the things were broken at the beginning of a misunderstanding also where PLS is and, and how it can actually be used. Um, remember that there was a lot of effort spent in embedded TLS impl implementations, and those are, uh, have been used for many of the IoT platforms. And obviously, people learned a lot on what works and what. And doesn't. actually, I and I have ex ex and I have deployment experience with with your code and uh, problems getting it across networks. Okay, um, so I mean, yeah, we tried. And we failed. So, uh, so, okay. Michael, so we come back. We need something like CTLS. We need something I'm, like CTLS. We didn't have I'm that. I'm sure I can help you with the problems with the code. Michael, is this this attempt earlier attempt documented somewhere? Because that I mean that's the sort of analysis that we're talking about here, like looking at slimming like down the, CLS. The attempt to make it work. Uh, no, we didn't well, attempt I mean, to make we point, attempted honestly, to make DTLS work on on constrained networks. We failed and said, "Gosh, looks like we need to do ad hoc." 
because I don't think we can push through something like CTLS through the working group. Well, I guess I don't remember. I don't recall anybody coming to me with a proposal to do anything like CTLS, um, which, which presumably would be one of the first people we would come to. What I saw was a proposal to do something entirely different. Um, so Cause, cause, because because we actually did the work beforehand, right? We actually did the work beforehand because you're not the only person that can figure out how to do, you know, a bit of crypto, right? So the, I don't remember calling saying that, Michael. Um, what, what I'm but, saying is like, what we're, we're in this situation, okay, where it might be the right answer is that we should construct. What I don't know is, is do I need to create a, a compressed version of TLS, which is uh, cryptographically and functionally equivalent to TLS, or am I allowed to trans transliterate that into something that looks like TLS, but but isn't actually compatible with TLS? Mike, let's be like this is sort of a history lesson a little bit, but um, at the beginning, it was actually the story was portrayed as this is the application layer security solution, and we are using it on top of TLS. Uh, that actually has uh, prevented a lot of the TLS uh, community to even look at this uh, because they thought that this is something unrelated. Uh, only much, much ye later, years later, we finally found out that this is actually um, supposed to replace DLS and become sort of like uh, the DLS with a different encoding. That's why we are here. I never had a plan to replace TLS, this is meant to work in use cases where TLS obviously doesn't work very well. If you try to use current DTLS over a con very constrained radio, you will, it's not fun. You I, will have to wait a while. Uh, I actually agree with that. That's clearly true. Yeah. And this was not only uh, one of the earlier, already from the beginning, a clear goal of this was to reuse COSI. We felt like we have COSI in these devices. No, you, you don't. Have code for TLS also, let's see what we can do with COSI. So that's the next misconception because just because OSCOR uses COSI, it doesn't mean that all of sort of it supports all of COSI. And you don't have COSI in, in, in the devices. I think you randomly mix stuff together. You don't even have co op in all devices. Um, it's like this is uh, well. This is this is some arbitrarily put things together. Well, this is an OSCOR implementation we're assuming because we are building an AKE for OSCOR. It seems that many of the CTS people are not at all interested in that part. But that that's for your information. And and what we have is exactly a COSI encrypt. We have COSI algorithms, and we have co-op and we have CBOR. For ad hoc, you need much, much more from COSI, which you don't have on the device. Uh -huh. No, the fact is that this is very tiny extension to if you have COSI, CBOR, and co-op. And that's one of the points. But I don't think we should discuss the COSI part, because that was only item one, and we are on item two in, in sub-bullet uh, sub -bullet two in, in, item, in the agenda item one. So I think we should leave that and get back to this quantification of, of the existence proof. Because that is what might lead us forward. I, I'd like also to add the, the time aspect here. We have a, a stressed time, timeline. People have implemented OSCOR in constrained uh, environment, which takes a long time. And they, they want to have an, a key exchange protocol to secure their application. So I think we, we actually should, should take care of, of the time we have in this meeting to progress. Okay, so the last I heard that I think I could summarize was maybe, there, there was a kind of an acceptance that the there is a niche there that this uh, existence proof could exist in or could fill. Uh, yeah, an existence proof. Could, sorry, let me start again. There, there is an existence proof of a thing that you couldn't really compress TLS for. The, the last statement I think Ecker made was that um, if you try and define an ache for to, to fill that niche, you inevitably will extend it. To the point where it has to have enough mechanism that really you haven't filled a niche because you've done as you end up doing as much as CTLS does. No, you said that. Um, I'm, I'm trying to summarize what you said. If, if oh, I'm wrong, no, I'm, I'm trying to say something quite different actually, which uh -huh. is that um, that my concern about that this this document, this requirements document, and, the, and this and this and this process has been predicated on the idea that there was going to be a we're going to design like a generalized ache 
with like a whole bunch of knobs that basically did a whole bunch of application scenarios. And that is the source of my concern. And if um, if if what, what instead is being proposed, which I thought I heard John Matson saying earlier, was a much more simpler set of protocols, which only does about two things, which is to say RPK and PSK, and is not intended to be generalizable to this whole category of things, then um, th then it might possibly be the case that it was attracted to design something new rather than trying to like something out something which was much intentionally much more general. And so I, I always thought we were doing what we're doing what you're just the second part, Ecker. I always thought that's what we were doing. Well, I mean, this this this, this I'm, I'm reading this I'm reading this requirements document, and it like it, 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 it has like three different ways to carry certificates. Um, it has you know um, it has signatures and 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 let me say to be home in. I mean, uh, how can I have three I think, ways of carrying my, certificates? If, I think if my last quote review identified at least seventeen different scenarios that this, that this requirements document envisioned. Uh, the, the three is as a carrying certificates are, 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 are by reference, um, in line in a in line in a unordered list, and in line in an ordered list. So, I mean, there are certain important cases which are by reference, the certificate by reference, um, and the bit. These cases where you identify the public key by, by hash or URL, those, those cases are clearly IoT use cases. That that's it's no point stripping, stripping down the protocol and removing those components from, from the protocol because that that will not be fit for purpose. But whether we need to have, uh, yeah, and then it, it also depends on what kind of deployments we're looking at. There, there is a wide variety of IoT settings. And as I mentioned in, in or I think it's actually uh, one part of the, um, yes, it's actually the, uh, the credential section speaking about a, we've heard companies mentioning this deployment path where you start off with a pre-shared key. And then you, because it's perceived as simple to, to starting point, and then you, you move like Laura Alliance is now doing, moving to a, a raw public key based provisioning, and then would like to take perhaps the next step and add certificates. That that might not be viable in, in, in that application, but other applications may want to, to go that path. So saying that this this um, this protocol must not support signatures or this must not support certificates. I think that's a that's not the right starting point, but we could we could of course try to prioritize the um, the scenarios which are seems most uh, relevant for IoT use cases. Okay, Stephen. Well, now we're in the scenario that, that you indicated I was concerned about. Yeah, it's inevitable. I mean, it's that's going to happen, and and you know, and I, I might somehow. I think it could make sense that I mean, starting from the starting from the point where you actually have uh, you have a a simple application, a simple uh, setting with 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 pre shared keys, with like you not know, an implementation of OSCORE, and you like to the natural first step would be to add uh, a PSK based uh, ache, but that not might not be the optimal from a security point of view or deployment point of view. So there are migration paths to consider as well. Sure, I agree. I, I, I agree with that, but I guess, um, um, but I think, I guess what I was trying to say, but I mean, but the point where what you were proposing to eventually build is a protocol with an enormous amount of, enormous amount of like flexibility and sensibility for a pile of application scenarios, then like, yes, absolutely. You could accrete those things one by one, or, um, um, or you could start with a protocol, which was somewhat more general and slim it down. And it's not clear to me why one would think that like accreting them one by one, starting from heat from nothing is the right way to build. There's a very clear um, case that we need to support, and that's that's these these scenarios where you are just using raw public keys and pressure. Th those must be supported. So that's sure. If, if you, if you can go any way you like, as long as you support those. those sure, sure. And I think I think the point Richard and I are trying to make is that is that we believe CTLs can support those use cases. Um, and when Ben and I, the colloquy between Ben and I earlier was me saying that it seemed like that was a lot of complexity to absorb, potentially a lot of complexity to absorb. If the only thing you cared about was the use cases, but if it, what you actually care about is like a much broader set of use cases as contemplated in this document, then suddenly that that, that complexity argument starts to be much less attractive. I think the prioritization is clearly RPK and, and PSK. These are the these are the re reason for ad hoc's existence. 
And I think the further you go in the other direction, if you have certificates with signatures, then I think then you will not have much mess much difference between ad hoc and um, CTLS when it comes to latency and message size. Yeah. So like so if, there's there's okay. maybe go ahead. Oh, that wasn't, yeah. that wasn't it. Ah, okay. Um, so, I mean, it sort of seems like we have two different loci, loci of, of functionality where, you know, there's a core area that it really is, is the primary goal, the primary thing it targets, and then it sort of creeps out or extends a little bit from there. Uh, you know, with ad hoc being sort of maybe, maybe focused on its origins as the pure PSK or raw public key thing. And uh, TLS, of course, starting out from the very full featured web scenarios. Um, and I mean, yes, it's sort of possible for these to evolve or get morphed or, or get crunched into some other scenarios, but there's uh, like an overlap of the distribution between the two of them. Uh, and I think that's, the, the, the space with this heavy overlap is what's being so problematic for us to think about. Um, but I'm, I, I'm sort of coming to the conclusion, uh, which could still be changed, of course, but if we do have a, a solid core of work that we want to focus on that, you know, has the very constrained nature in, in terms of being the pure PSK raw public keys, uh, it feels fairly natural to define a protocol that works for that. And if it happens to evolve into something a little bit more extensible, as Stephen is saying, is inevitable. Uh, it's not entirely clear how concerned we need to be about that evolution, given that it has its origins and its focus in the more narrow case. And it just sort of, you know, if somebody ends up using that in the, the broader signature certificate case, because it's easier for their deployment because they're already using it for other reasons. Uh, I don't know how concerned I should be about that. Uh, similarly to if someone is already using TLS and they start having smaller devices and they want to uh, pack it down a little bit and get into a new, new use case scenario, I, that also does not seem very concerning to me. And, and yes, I agree with, with Ecker and Richard that we should not go into things and say our primary focus is to produce a general purpose ache. Um, there's just, but if we have a, a core focused point of work that we want to start with, and we could say, you know, this is what we're going to focus on for now. And it might be extensible in the future to do some other things, but we're, you know, it, it might not too. And if, if it doesn't end up that extensible, we still think that there's value from doing what we're focusing on now. Um, like that sort of viewpoint is something that feels reasonable to me, uh, but I don't know if that is the case for everybody. So does everybody, do, does anybody want to question uh, Ben's description there? Or, or is that is Ben's description of a way forward something we could live with? Well, I don't quite understand what it means. So, um, I mean, does it mean stripping out basically the the signature signature and certificate modes of this uh, protocol, of this of the requirements? Uh, I mean, so I guess I should apologize for coming up with something off the cuff that is vague and hard to follow. Um, but I think it sort of touches back on a point that I had started to bring up earlier, which is to sort of consider what are the current and future expected use cases and or not use case, what are the current and future expected deployment scenarios or deployment scale for these eight or 17 or however many uh, different combinations of crypto primitives. And if it turns out that the only ones we know actually have current deployment or near future deployment are you know, two of them, 
then maybe we don't need to spend a lot of time on the other 15 in the requirements document right now. So, so okay, but I, I mean, Ben, I would love that if that would provide a way forward. However, I, I I don't know that it's possible to to write a protocol that that can't be extended into the areas that would cause concern to the people who like CTLS. I, I don't know if that's actually possible. I, I agree. It it doesn't seem clear that it's it's possible to to write a protocol on that way, but you also don't have to. Uh, write the protocol and spend a lot of time on the full generality of things. You can say, I want to write a protocol and make sure I get the narrow bits right. And sure, it's going to be possible to do the other stuff with it as well. But I can worry about how to do that properly later. And if it ends up being kind of janky because I painted myself into a corner, well, I have some other options for the more generic scenario. So I'm certainly not like trying to argue when designing a protocol, which like no one has any idea how to extend ever. That would be unwise, right? Um, 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 I'm talking at what the I'm talking at what the requirements document and hen and hence the implied charter for this work is. Um, right, and I think your your point is that the current requirements document is very generic and it doesn't give a sense of what is the focus versus what is you know, we're throwing it in there because we can. But but that's the nature of the IETF process, right? When you have a bunch of smart people who are saying, well, what about this? What about this? The, the people keep adding to the requirements document. That's just how it happens. Um, OK, well, I mean, but then but then 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 I think the question is, are the things we cut out? But to, there are not are out of scope for this work. Or, or to, to, to try and characterize the, the way I think Ben was trying to describe it there is, is maybe there's a missing requirement to say the, the focus here has to be either on the really kind of tightly constrained, very, you know, PSK plus RPK kind of modes or on a generic thing. And those no, those may not be the same solution. Let's let's put the focus. On. I, I, I guess I, 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 I this may be a way forward if this is an actual candidate text. But um, um, but um, I mean, I, I guess. Uh, it, it, this sounds like Punjabi blue word. Sorry, Eric. Can you repeat that last? I didn't. Cut I you. said. I said this sounds like it might be a way forward. I'd have to see some, like some, some clean concrete. Okay. Um, uh, okay. So, 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 let's be optimistic for a second. Uh, sure. uh, <laughs> uh, so, people, please start typing in the Java room, in the WebEx chat, uh, on, on the back of your hand, whatever, and see if you can come up with some text that tries to express that. Um, we do it in real time, or should we give someone an action to produce that text? Uh, I, I was I was actually hoping we could do it. Your just suggested because <laughs> I also hit one conference calls. So, so you want text for what are the prioritized use cases? Um, I guess I guess I, I, was, I, I guess I, I'm not trying to be difficult, but I, I prioritize isn't the word I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is 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 having is having this work scoped down to the point where it's not a fully generalized ache for like. But the end uses cases are currently in specification, not in order of operations in which they will be designed. And if 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 the if the idea is that we're going to first like design, if this is like an open ended charter, which is like, well, we're going to divide, first design PSK and then we're going to design RPK and we're going to certificates, and then we're going to design signatures and blah. Like, no, that's like not I'm not cool with that. If it is, we're going to design this thing and then maybe someday later we'll recharge to accent some stuff. Then like, then maybe right. Um, but like my point is that my point is the scope of this of, the, of this specification is like a fully general wake, right? Um, and 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 so like to go back to the with my, my colloquy with Ben quite a bit earlier, like that seems to be precisely the scenario for which Tails was designed, and so I'm, I, and so and so like I'm not really willing to concede that it's not an appropriate use for that use case. I, I still don't understand. We have. We have problems a setting where we think there is no good solution today, and we don't see any other solution. So, so what, why? But we list those but, prioritized use cases, and and you need to comply with those. What? Why? Uh, that I mean that that would at least be the sort of the scope where where you can. Uh, 
Um, sure. I guess. Well, well, I guess what I'm looking for. Yeah. Well, I, sorry. Well, I'm looking. But sorry. I thought we were having a different discussion. I, so I thought what if I understood what Ben and Stephen were attempting to accomplish, it was to create a target scope that would be a target scope not for this working group specifically, but for ad hoc to work on that. Then the people who the people who were interested in CTLS would think was a sufficiently small scope that they would not be interested in pushing CTLS for it. Is that is, is that what you're trying to accomplish, Stephen? If we can accomplish that, I would be happy. Yes. Right. And so, um, um, so so just taking just taking the list of things in this document and prioritizing them doesn't solve my problem. <laughs> um, 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 and so now, contrary now in my, in my last call comments, what I was asking for was a you know was for each of these use cases a set of like numbers that we were supposed to a set of targets, um, which I still think be valuable. But like, if we're only going to do two of them, then like the number of targets we need is much smaller. So what what was exactly wrong with Ben's statement that we target certain use cases where 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 this AK this AK needs to perform well? And if it if it happens to apply to to other uh, other cases, well, what's the problem with that? As long as in order in order to get there, you have to essentially, if you want to support all the use cases, you are designing a generic. Uh, and exactly what is the problem with that? I I I I feel I, I'll just repeat myself. I think having the ITF a big pile of generic aches is bad. Okay, so I think we have looped around to the top of the hour, uh, the start of our call again. <laughs> sure, I'm just, I'm just I'm trying to respond. No, to I'm, not, I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just I'm just noting. <laughs> um, however, I think just before that, we almost got to a to, to a possible point that might bring progress. So, so I think it's not just, it's not kind of prioritizing. I think what we want to say is that there's. There are some there are some niches there are some kind of deployment scenarios where we don't believe we can compress a generic protocol in, in a satisfactory manner uh, a no I'm, not, I'm, I'm sorry i'm not going to concede that point stephen um um it's the what, 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 what i'm trying to say much more much more much more nuanced which is that it's not worth if all you care about is one very small set of use cases, it's not worth going to the effort of like hoisting in a generic comp compression generic protocol. That's a different statement. Understand? If we're going to be designing for eight different use cases, um, and even if any individual one only uses one, like then I think I think compressing a generic protocol makes a lot of sense. I can try try to write that out in more detail, but like I just like it's really important to be present what I'm trying to say here because I'm not saying what you just said. Okay, but I, you know, hmm. I agreed with what you said, and I agreed with what I said. And I okay. <laughs> um, um, I, 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 I guess. Go ahead. Well, I, I'm just trying to figure out whether or not, whether or not we can plausibly make a way forward on this call right now. Um, so I did write some text at the bottom of the etherpad. Oh, I'm not okay. sure if it's the type of text people were asking for or not. Oh, I'm glad we had that. I was like actually waiting for the etherpad to like to show up so I could, like, I like lost it. I'm gonna pull it up above into the float. Oh, wow, we're like, we're like cleverly adding our names to the uh, I mean, I would have to study this, but this is this is in the, this is in the zone of what I was thinking. So my, I guess, and again, it's perhaps this is text that we just need to take to the list and then consider. Um, does anybody have a, a you know, an immediate comment that this text seems absolutely crazy or absolutely wonderful? And somebody in the background obviously doesn't like it. Uh, yeah, sorry, I have a, a, a my my, my five year old thing. My five year old is concerned about X. He doesn't like X. Um, um, I mean, I mean, like this. 
I, I this is approximately what I was expecting based on what Ben said, and I, I, I don't think that's a little more, but I think this is like in the zone of things I was thinking were, were, were sensible. Your Honor, John, have you had a chance to look at that? Or? Um, to understand? Yeah. I think what Ben said before was very, very good. I have some time to read, but. The... I, I guess, I guess, like, uh, see, see, I, I really hate, um, I, I'm sure other people do hate being asked to agree to something on the fly. Um, um, so I. I would suggest that we like like this is this is text like which like I can think about for a little bit and so the other guys can think about for a little bit too and uh, Richard already dropped off so I think like I would suggest we try to circle by email and then and then perhaps you can schedule another call um, uh, if, if if needed to try to hammer something out and if and if like everybody if everybody's like this is garbage then we don't need to right yeah I, I, I'm fine with that so, okay so the the action and if uh, Michael if you can get into these but the action the action is you know we need to send this text to the list. Ask people, does it seem to make sense as part of the whole thing? And uh, possibly circle back and have another call if needed. Uh, I'll commit. I will commit to, to to reading this carefully and chatting it over internally and coming back in like the next few days with my thoughts. Okay, great. Uh, and and I think I think we we covered all three of the points I wanted to cover in in, in all that discussion. Um, I think. And uh, yeah, so uh, I, I, I do. Do we want to proceed with the agenda as previously planned? Then um, and thanks for for all the discussion. I think it's the key kind of disagreements that we're trying to get over here. Uh, do we want to proceed as planned then with the requirements slides uh, that Ran pr proposed? Uh, sure. Yeah, it'd be helpful. I think there were some points that were worth getting into. Fair enough. I'll just try and find a way to present those. One second. Does that look like you expected to? Yes. Great. Okay, so just uh, say next slide as you need it. Yeah. Next slide. Oh crap! Where is it now? <laughs> <laughs> you, that didn't work. You're on the same slide. Right. Okay. So yes. So we are in uh, submit version zero two. We got working group reviews from Christopher Wood, Richard Barnes, Eric Ruscorla, and, and Hannes Trofenik. There was responses. Posted March 24th, and there is the GitHub branch we're working on. And there were some updated comments from Maker uh, last night. Next slide, please. Right. I don't think we yeah. get into this, but yeah, go on. Oh, and I, I'd like to suggest, like, 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 when we when we get through, like, let's 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 just be sensitive to as we go through this things that we're just recapping the discussion we just had and not do them. <laughs> right, and I think also in. We should think for each comment whether this actually has to be solved in the requirements document or whether this actually more belongs to the design phase. Sure. So here is um, a new formulation, um, in case you haven't seen it. So it's, it doesn't say shall. It says shall specify how to pr provide cozy algorithms to Oscor. And then there is a recommendation because that, to avoid duplicated implementation. But we can go, we can sort of. It sounds like we have some new tests for that. Um, right. um, the rest of this looks fine. Um, uh, um, well, sorry, the next. Uh, and this last bullet point, I guess, um, like I think there were two points here, right? Um, uh, one is like whether or not this should be refing Cose. And the second is like what it actually should um, uh should carry, but I get. I propose we like, punt this because this seems to be the core of Ben's suggestion, and so um, maybe this will come irrelevant. <laughs> okay, great. Next slide, please. Um, yeah, I think this is just that seems fine. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Next, please. Um, yeah, this is session identifier. This, this was put in by Kartik, um, and I think this is the purpose of this session identifier is uh, for for formal verification. So, so note, note that connection identifier is now removed from the draft. Right. So Karthik's on the line, but Karthik, did you just mean a, a, a Crutcher Kennedy style um, session identifier? Is that what you meant when you were saying this? Well, it's at the beginning of the end, but 
really bad at the end. You don't want to agree on a unique identifier for this agreed upon session. That sort of you know, notion of freshness, that you cannot just use the same set of keys and generate a, uh, a session key that's not, that would not be session. So you need a fresh session identifier to point out this particular session. You need that both formal proofs, but also more practically, there should be something and typically, this is a transcript. The transcript can be thought of as a session identifier in this particular sense. Uh, right. Or it could be some other identifier that it is. You need to have some notion of. Yeah, that makes sense. You want to rephrase this somehow, Ecker, or you have to. Um, let me just see. Let me just see. What we did. We 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 tried to solve this problem in TLS. Let me just see. What we did there because I think. Um, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, as Karthik says, this is when you think about. Maybe that's not what you think about. It's like a transcript rather than. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. so we had this. Um, no, but we we actually had this because like we talked about what the, what the informal angles were. I can just find the damn thing. Um, uh, hang on a second. Let me just. See. I'll, I'll, I'll I'll take a look and try to find some text. Like I just I found this very confusing to people. Very confusing because I wasn't sure what it meant. But like I'll 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 flow some text for that. It's not a problem. I I, okay. I agree with the objective. Right. So then we have the discussion about misbindings. And so the note here is just saying that we do want to support the case of, for example, hash of public key or the public key itself. Though both of those settings are relevant. Right. So 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 the, the issue is, I mean Karthik, I'm sure can talk about this more than I than I can, but that if you treat people's um public keys as their identities, then you get identity misbinding problems. Um because it's pop. Uh, unless unless it's impossible to register um, a public key for which you don't have proof of possession, I mean this is the heart of like what Zigma um, covers, right? And so the classic way to do this is to is, is to include um, the identities of the endpoints inside the transcript itself. But if the identities of the endpoints are merely the um, are merely the public keys, and you don't get that, then you don't get that property. And so um, that's what that that's the reason I'm pushing on this. Now maybe we can just like hand wave this sum, but that's the reason that's what I'm pushing on. Karthik, am I, am I representing that correctly? Yeah, more generally, whenever we talk about authentication, we have to talk about identity and what the identities of the two parties are. And that is a little bit open here because we have so many different ways of accessing identities, including the raw public key. Um, I don't think this is going to change, but if there was some notion of kind of a global identity that you could use, uh, uh, that, we, that the devices knew about each other, then that would make this much more explicit. Um, but I agree that there is a concern that if uh, what we are agreeing upon is the keys, but what we really wanted to agree upon was the identities, then there is a there is a gap between what we are authenticating and what we wanted to authenticate. Um, but I mean, if we had only one mode, it's very easy to make this very precise. If you have three or four modes, then we have to be careful about what is this notion that generalizes across PSKs and RPKs and certificates. Uh, not clear. So, so do we need to change the requirement? I, I understand this is a, um, an issue in, in, in verification, but do we, do we need to change anything in the requirement here or in the text? Um, I guess, I guess I, I'm willing to, I'm going to let this go, but I think when we actually design this protocol design, we're getting important to understand. Um, and actually, I mean, like, so to be clear, uh, uh, what 7250 in TLS has this problem, right? Which is to say, you could just name, well, so if you name RPKs, um, it has the exact same problem where basically you, you, um, you there's no guarantee of binding. So when we actually do the protocol design, um, if we, um, with any kind of RPK, it'd be important to stipulate what, um, uh, um, uh, what, what the guarantees you're attempting to provide are. Yeah. Um, but I, I think, think we, we, we can just, we can, we can put a pin in that, I think though. I agree with everything said here. I think the actual solution need to match what the actual deployments are and what what kind of identities can they provide? What is reasonable input to the AKA? Yeah. Uh, just, just I want to check, uh, John and Yaron, are, are you okay with kind of um... Taking your own notes or, or going back to the recording for this, we're just uh, Michael has to move, uh, go off to another meeting, so I think we're we may be losing our note taker. We'll, we'll take notes from here then. Okay, great, thanks. Thank you. Next, please. Uh, this is the new replay protection um, formulated by 
Christopher Wood, I think, or yeah, something similar like that. Ah, that looks good to me. I could, I wasn't able to find that um, because I didn't understand the branch, but that looks fine. Okay. Next. Right. So yes, this is this is sort of the, the property that you don't really verify. I mean, you basically just verify the public key. I mean, this is related to the identity, probably. But you only verify that the public key, the signature matches the public key, but you don't verify that the public key actually is the identity you, uh, you intend to authenticate to. Uh, and Karthik, you, I think you wrote this. What did you mean? No, no this is not Karthik. Oh, okay, you're, you're, sorry. You can't blame him. Oh, okay. But I was going to blame him Karthik. anyway. Um. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so I guess there's two questions here. One is about authorization. Is it that you want to make sure that this is the identity you actually want you wanted to authenticate? Yeah. Uh, but the other one seems to be. I mean, I'm just trying to read this text carefully. Um, both parties should agree on the identities of both parties. Since if somebody authenticates to me, if Alice authenticates to me uh, as part of the protocol, I also need to know that Alice intended to authenticate it to me and not to somebody else and that's sort of related to identity misfinding but it's kind of called recipient authentication uh, not just sender authentication so i need to know that both parties agree on the identities of both parties i'm not sure that's exactly what is being said here though but no. that would be a natural thing to say did you propose the rephrasing here i think we actually i could, I could give it a shot didn't we have some crappy text for this in, in, in 8446 i think it was like we did um but Karthik, it sounds like you can you don't know what to do. And I agree that's a good that's a good, a good objective. Thanks, Karthik. Next, please. Um, what's this now? All right. So yeah, there, this is actually your comment is about the third paragraph. Uh, EFS may be achieved in, in different ways. Right. So, so I actually, I should, two, I should, two, yeah. So I, yeah. So I think this, the, the, the proposal looks fine and, and the stuff in red looks fine. Um, the, um, the, uh, um, the, 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 I guess the reason that I'm like, uh, the, the, what, what I, I didn't write my comments very clearly, but I think what I was trying to get at here is that there are, there are non protocol designs, um, that the way you actually build your implementation that, um, that lure, that lead, lead to like compromising PFS as an example, being any kind of ticket based resumption scheme. And so, as I understand it, we are specifying resumption here, which means that you might, that it might be possible to build a ticket, ticket based resumption scheme, in which case you'd be violating this rule. And so I'm trying to understand like what, like, how do you actually write this rule in a way that seems sensible? Um, like, even if you do, like, even if you do like, um, I, I guess, so I, I guess, I guess if you're always doing Diffie Hellman, then you're going to say, you know, this problem. Um, cause you know, zero TT. So maybe I'm just like, I mean, projecting TLS behavior on this. So if we're, I guess going back to the previous thing, you said no zero RTT and you said, and it's always doing Diffie Hellman. So we're not doing it. Um, so, so in the, I guess, are we thinking we would design a resumption mode that didn't have Diffie Hellman or that would just be hoisted under, under, under OS core. And so we wouldn't need one. So the first, oh, I haven't seen any resumption mode. Have you? No, we haven't talked about that. Do we need to determine that now, or can that be left to the design phase? Uh, I, th I think, look, I think, I think, like, this isn't, this isn't like a law, this isn't like an actual law. So, like, if we, if we conclude this text is wrong, we'll just deal with it. So, fine. Yes. Okay. So, we leave it as is then. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks. Next. Uh, this was one comment by Christopher Wood. Uh, he wanted to, he has asked, asked the question about hybrid, sort of simultaneously more than one key exchange. And uh, I assume that is out of scope. I wrote that here. I think it should be. I think we agreed on that previously. So I'm not sure how it's not going to swim back in. Mm -hmm. Good. And then there was a clarification about elliptic curves that they are also in part of the, the <coughs> negotiation. Previously, it was missing the statement that protocol shall allow negotiation. It just stated that protocol shall uh, allow multiple. Okay. Next. Uh, so 
Yeah. Okay. So, so this this was the um, um, yeah the statement about uh, what is the result of a successful negotiation. And yeah, we proposed um, or someone I actually can't remember who proposed that we should have the least uh, um, the most preferred algorithms um, because I mean you could be less specific. You could speak about uh, strong integrity and negotiation integrity and so on. And uh, yeah, we're happy with that. And just yeah. wanted to point out that, that that might lead to the least. I mean, uh, yeah. So I I, 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 I think it'd be fine if you told. I think it'd be fine if you told the uh, the endpoints that they had to that if the, if the final protocol required you to negotiate a certain way. Um, so like I mean, like like let's take a, let's take a, like a, a, a protocol like um you know any protocol that has like an offer answer structure right um where the offer gives like you know his order to the list and the answer has to do something right um like it'd be fine if you told the answer he had to do like I don't know one of the two one of the two things like, like the two things people typically do are pick the one on their list that is my favorite or pick the one on my list that is their favorite um and he's fine if you told them they had to do one of those two things um I just don't but the protocols but no but no protocol I'm aware of guarantees that without like um w without like a bunch of extra bullshit hmm. okay so what i found is that this section actually contains the text below which states uh <laughs> properties about strong integrity and downgrade attacks so we could simply just remove this um the first uh, bullet there i hope, I hope you're happy with sounds good great next Um, right. So coming back to that actual that paragraph. Um, so the question is, should we quantify strong? And after I think after the buff, buff there was a mail exchange where someone proposed exactly this, and uh, then the list decided that was not uh, necessary. And then we also have the. Um, I mean, we don't need to go into curve two to nine, whether it's approximately two to. 128 bits, but we definitely want to support max shorter than 128 bits. So, so, so we might want to add something stating that, as you propose, that um, we should have equivalent of 128 bits uh, integrity, but that we allow shorter max, so, something like that. Would that be acceptable? Um, I, I think maybe. I think Karthik and I had a long conversation with this, so I'm not sure. Do you have some text in mind, Karthik? The bits of security thing is pretty controversial anyway. Um, but uh, in general, people do understand it well. So it, if we had some informal target saying 128 bits of security, the people will understand what you can instantiate with. It. So uh, you might be able to get away with shorter max for sure. I'll tell you, but we're still achieving still achieving the same level of uh, security. I'll tell you what. How, how about I? How about I? It sounds like sounds like you're open to signing this in principle. So why don't I float some text and then we can. We can decide after we see this text if like this is a good idea or if it's a bad idea. Yeah, sounds good. I think your suggestion here is fine. I'll send a PR then, and then if if if, if people like, it, I mean, like, and with with the understanding that people might not like the PR when they see it. Good. Thank you. Next. Yes, this this was proposed partly by. I think um, it's basically spelling out what is the sigma i and sigma r in this in this respect. That's the first paragraph. Hope that's clear now. Um, the second paragraph is on yeah, just noting that some information may be may need to be transported in plain, plain text uh, identifiers to allow correlation between yeah. messages and cybersecurity. Uh, notably, the PS PSK identifier. Yes. Mm, yes. Why is that? That's that's presumably mentioned in some other paragraph. So yes, that that's yeah, that so this is just other, other than that. Yeah. And connection identifier is removed from the graph. Okay. Next, please. Yeah, we have the auxiliary data. There was some comments around that. And one question, um, John, on this identity protection. There was also the 
the issue of this unlinkability was that related uh, in the part of identity protection or was that in a separate section so there was you had one comment about privacy yeah. and that we added the privacy consideration oh, okay uh, at the end so that's basically the privacy consideration currently in the document uh, and this was about auxiliary data hannes had problems um, about the access token being mentioned here. So we removed that, this text. Okay. It's also I had a concern about uh, uh, CSR and the use of CSR. That uh, he, he would like to see that more like early application data. And in fact, if you use, uh, like is proposed here in this example, uh, CSR in, in the third message, that's very close to early, um, early application data. So I think that this, this is sort of an, an alternative way of doing or passing the, the certificate signing request. Um, and then finally, Richard proposed a formulation for protection of auxiliary data, which we thought was really good. So we copied that. Any more comments here? No. Next, please. Yes, now Mike go left, did he? Uh, that's a shame. So this was uh, comments, was some text that Michael put in and Decker commented on and Michael responded to. What, what we as working group could, could discuss is whether we think this is actionable or not, whether this is a requirement. I mean, I'm, I guess, I, 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 I think this is, I think Michael's, like Michael's text here, I basically think is like not unreasonable. Um, you know, this is it goes back to like Adam Langley have one joint and keep it well oiled. Um, so, um, you know, I, I guess I probably wouldn't put this text in here because I don't think it's actionable, but I'm not going to fight about it if people think it's important. Because like I, I, I agree with the philosophy being espoused here by and large. Uh -huh. But nobody would uh, disagree with that, right? You, nobody wants to create protocol and put stuff in there that nobody understands. Right, but is there a harm having this text in the require in this requirements? I'm I'm not going to fight about it. Okay, so let's let's keep it next. I, I misunderstood this. I misunderstood this text. I agree. Okay, so this is um, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's clear. Yeah, yeah. I I just I I just misread it. And he has to point out to me in your in your response. Okay. Good. So unless there are yeah, then there are good two nine then now service. Uh, Richard commented that the first paragraph was overlapping very much on the now service uh, stated on underlying transport. We removed that and then realized that this section should probably change uh, to availability. Now to understand if that's right, you should have I should have copied in the actual text, but it's basically. Let's say now that text is saying um, it's saying something that you should not be able to um, to like send a single message and get some node to lock down for a long period right. of time. Something along these lines, but not exactly that, that. So we could we could look at that, or you could send comments if you have problems with the new title of the section. Otherwise, we move to the last. Uh, Subsection, which is the lightweight part. And so here's the new. Um, we were clarifying some of the benchmarks. Here is the new yeah. information, uh, which so, in this. Yeah. So I'd like, I'd like to take, I'd like to take a step back on this. I think this is like, I think this is the part that we had that was like super contentious at the beginning. And I think like I put, we, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to read your gifts, but I think I don't want, I don't want to argue about these right now. Okay. Perfect. So what I did is basically noted that what you requested in your email, I'll put that here, that the text intended here is to show what's expected to be achievable um, and an RPK with static if you have monkeys are feasible for that. That was one remark from my side. And then next slide, please. So we actually did um, some of this in preparation for the SEC dispatch interim March 2019. And the benchmarks are exactly, or at least that I can tell, Type of properties that's requested. There is lower time, lower one time of air. There's the back off time, and those um, spreadsheets are actually um, intended to use 
it's not yet calculations for for uh, it is currently calculations for specific protocols, but the spreadsheets also there is a how to basically how you fill in your um, message sizes, how you get out the time of air. So, so it, it, it it essentially provides the type of data. It's not plotted as a graph or something like that, but it provides the type of data. Um, that I think you requested. Okay, well I can certainly take another look at that. And the final slide uh, on on this topic is this is this is what produced those type of diagrams. That okay. Why well, can't you take another look at that? Okay. Yeah. So we have some issues to resolve. Mm, if I remember right, it were actions to Anchor and to Kartik. Did someone else get? Uh, yes, I'll add to them in the minutes. Uh, so there was an action point for uh, Ecker and Kartik to propose. Uh, so what is this on identity protection? No, I'm sorry. One twenty eight bits. Yes, 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 exactly. On on uh, the, the security strength, and that's about it. And, and, and then uh, Kartik, yes, yes, exactly. Uh, so it's captured in the minutes. And the question on scheduling, uh, is it feasible to try and resolve these actions in, let's say, the next two weeks? Sounds good. Sounds good. I'll try my best. Okay, let's, let's do those. I, I, I mean, I realize there's a whole bunch of other working group sessions going on in the next week or two, so people are busy, but let's try for that. Okay. And, and um, so what about the, the text that then here. What what do we do with that? I was hoping to spend a few days looking at it and talking to people, and then I was going to send comments, send my send my thoughts on that. I was hoping you guys would do the same. So yes, yeah, somebody... please. I'll, I'll... Go ahead. And that will end up in the requirements document. We make sure it gets highlighted to the list out of the minutes, and we ask people to to read about it, think about it, see what to do about it, including possibly putting in the requirements document. Okay, so that was your last slide, sir. Yes. Great. Okay, so that's, that's good. Uh, so we had a couple of quick kind of status updates on ad hoc and on CTLS. Um, yep. Currently, this is ad hoc first. Do you want to stick with that and maybe just take like seven minutes each? Yep. I mean, I will need a minute and a half, so um, whatever. Okay. Well, yep. Let me keep it. Okay. Should. Do you share the slides or? Yeah. Uh, great. So this is version 01 slide. Yeah. Uh, so this list changes since the 01 version. Basically, we have uh, tried to implement all the suggestions from the working group, try to fulfill the requirements, try to optimize the protocol even more, which is also aiming at the requirements and then we have uh, made some clarifications based on people trying to implement and uh, do formal verification of ad hoc uh, so the algorithms of ad hoc and oscor are now independent of each other um, we have as was a requirement we have added a mixed um, um, mixed mode and we'll go into that later the T derivation for the static Diffie-Hellman mode is now serial instead of parallel, as based on a suggestion from Kartik on the list about static Diffie-Hellman. Uh, the design has changed to uh, Mac then sign instead of sign then Mac. This is now similar to Ike. Uh, reason is that it made more sense with its mixed mode and that it saves uh, bytes. Uh, the identifier encoding has been optimized so that there is a lot more values that take a single byte. Uh, we have made the encryption of message two in CPA, so no integrity protection, as uh, discussed in the Sigma paper. This can be done. Uh, see, we have added an optional integrity protected subject name for RPKs to protect against misbinding attacks in cases where you can 
uh, can assign a subject name to the key. Uh, then several clarifications and a lot more test vectors. We have implemented uh, almost everything in the specification now. Uh, next slide. Uh, so this, uh, these slides illustrate the new method types. So zero, three, and four was what was there before. One and two are the new mixed, where you have one party authenticates with a signature key and the other with a static Diff Hellman key. And this is to optimize the, the, the requirement that one party should authenticate with a certificate and the other with a RPK. Then you get the best, least overhead if you do uh, signature and static Diff Hellman. Uh, yeah, uh, can take next slide. Uh, here's a, as requested by Michael, a uh, slide illustrating the new mixed asymmetric mode. So the method parameter, which is the first input sent, uh, can be 0, 1, 2, 3 for this asymmetric mode. And that integer determine uh, if the responder uh, authenticates with a signature or a static Div Hellman key and similar if the initiator authenticates with a signal or a static Div Hellman key. And then you get four different possibilities. And this has been implemented with a single field called Signature and Mac after a suggestion by Ecker last meeting. Um, see, There's still some trade-offs, as we can see, between security properties and performance. Uh, Basically, with the static Div Hellman mode, you get, if you mix in these ephemeral static keys, uh, we think you get a little bit weaker authentication properties. But on the other hand, you get stronger security properties in case of a key compromise. I think that's something for the working group to discuss in the future. And then uh, the blue dot here, we have changed this to in CPA encryption without integrity. And the reason you can do this is that the encryption here, uh, the second message is only still always only protect against passive attacker. An active attacker in the Sigma protocol can ask the responder. Uh, the, the initiator is not authenticated before message three. Uh so, 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 John, what happens if the um, if the initiator takes some action based on the auxiliary data? Uh, the auxiliary data is signed. Okay. Okay. Or, or mapped. So it's included in the inner Mac okay. and the signature if there is a signature. Okay. I, mean, I, mis I mis misunderstood the section you were covering. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, next slide. Uh, and this is the last slide. Here is a summary of the message sizes. Uh, so all sizes has been a, a message sizes for the PSK plus FMRDFM has been slimmed a bit because of the new optimized coding of identifiers. The RPK case is now a lot smaller as static Diffie Hellman keys is used instead of signature keys. And with these numbers, we can we can see that we will be able to fit ad hoc into three unfragmented frames in if five hop six dish. Uh, the limitation there is 45 bytes of a payload, and we can do the same in 40, 51 byte LoRa one. And the limitation there is 51 byte frames minus the chic. Oh man, it's really a bummer you're one byte short on the on the RPK plus ECDHE for the six, six dish, huh? Uh, what? Uh, so you said the limit? Yeah, so you said the limit is forty five. So in six dish, you're, we're one byte over, huh? As uh, the yeah, the, the first bullet here says that we can we have identified that we can save a few more. Bytes. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say that's like, that'd be super irritating. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so there are there are several length fields that are known, either crypto algorithms which the fields are known, or some fields that are actually encoded several times. Right. You, we we can save, I think, at least two bytes here for this forty six, uh, which yeah we can implement later because this is important sure. goal to me. And that's it. Okay, any, uh, just change slides to the CTLS ones. Any questions on what we're doing that? Or I think it's mostly to be taken to the list, really. Uh, where is this? And don't, don't, don't bother my slides, because like my slides were much more like, like you know, overview of CTLS. Um, and I think, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, I don't have like a diff, a nice diff the way that, that John does here. Um, um, I guess the, the, the most relevant things are, you know, we're continuing to update it. Um, uh, we have several implementations in progress, one in Rust and one in Go. Um, and um, uh, um, it's been adopted by TLS sort of um, in that, in that there, was, there was a hum to adopt it and the charter um, is, it now, is now being rechartered. So I don't know what the status of the charter has been, um, but I assume we're getting pretty close. Um, and then once, as soon as the charter um, is fixed, then we'll be um, we'll be actually submitting the, the working group version. Um, and we're working with Karthik and others to um, uh, to, to adapt the TLS one three proofs of security to CTLS. The charter's on next week's telechat. I didn't see a need to rush it before. No, 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 not at, all. So, uh, not at all. Not at all. Next one. I've been working on a oh. C based implementation based on our embed DLS. Um, Sorry, Hannes, I didn't get you online beforehand. I didn't want. I didn't want to like. I, I, when I had slides, I didn't. I didn't want to. I didn't want to promise something for you. Okay, great. Um, so we have like six minutes left. I think. I think uh, we have a. Uh, you know, we have a set of minutes about the requirements. People have a bunch of actions of, to, that they will try and fulfill in the next week or two. Uh, we'll we'll hope that Ben is uh, being a great idea and saving the day with the. With a suggestion for how to characterize things and work, I guess, on ad hoc and CTLS continues. And with that, I think that's our agenda. Are there is there any other business or something that I forgot or we skipped over? Thank you. Hearing nothing. Thank you all. Um, and we'll discuss on the list and as necessary organize other meetings so thanks very much for all the discussion guys thank you bye, -bye. thank you thank, thank you, you. Thanks, everyone.